This is the post-game show presented by the Maroon Club, enhancing 23 Division I sports. Join the Maroon Club today and our Coca-Cola player of the game. Experience the Coke side of life. Dan Mounty is with the head coach and our Coca-Cola player. All right, thanks a lot, Gary and John. We have head coach Fran O'Hanlon here. And Fran, I'll tell you what, this is like a prize fight. I'm looking at the halftime stats. Lead, cha lead changes nine times, six ties. I think it got even more intense in that second half. This was a display of coaching craftsmanship. Tell me a little bit about the X's and O's that you had to pull around for that second half surge. I think it's more about the Seths than the Joeys. Uh, Jimmy's in the Joes, uh, so to speak. Uh, you know, th this is the type of game that a rival game, but also us trying to climb up in the standings. Uh, we came out, we were ready. I thought, you know, one of the things for us is rebounding the basketball. Seth did a great job with that. Joey knocked down some very, uh, you know, uh, big threes for us and a couple big foul shots. It was a great game for us, you know, and I, I thought everybody stepped up and did a good job. No doubt about it. Now, tell me about how the rest of the season looks for Lafayette now. You're heading to play Colgate. And then, uh, of course, you're hoping for that first round home game in the Patriot League Championship. Well, uh, my mantra the whole time is trying to win February, and now we just take one at a time. Uh, Colgate's coming off a 25-point win against Loyola, so they're playing at a very high, high level right now. And that's the next one up, you know, and we got to do a better job, uh, you know, than we did the last time we played them. Brando Hanley, congratulations on a big win here today, the winningest head coach in Patriot League history. Well done. Thank you. All right, Fran, thank you. And let's bring in Joey Tosinski, our Coca-Cola player of the game. Joey, I'll tell you what, when, when Lafayette needed some points, you were there in so many different ways. We have a, pretty much a stat sheet filler here, but tell me a little bit about some of the opportunities that you saw and maybe some of the inspiration you had coming into this contest against Lehigh. Well, I mean, Lehigh, you always have to get up for that one. It's a huge rivalry, biggest rivalry in the nation, one of them. And actually, my family came all the way out from Colorado, so. I mean, that's a little extra, extra inspiration I had there, and it just feels great to win and make open shots, make difficult shots. Everybody on our team played great offensively and defensively, and it's just a great feeling coming out with a win right now. Tell me about what you were seeing from the arc, because you were red hot yet again tonight, five of eight from the three-point line. Um, my coaches and teammates are all just looking for me to shoot threes. They tell me to shoot threes, and... When they tell you that, you kind of have to listen to them. And then you start making some, your confidence goes up, and you feel great the rest of the game. And the basket even looks bigger, so it's a great feeling. And then a place where you hadn't been until late in the contest, the free throw line. Ice water in your veins, my friend. Well done. I mean, I missed a couple free throws in like my last three or something, but I felt confident going into those. And it's just a great feeling. I knew I had a chance to put the, put the game out of reach for him. And yeah, I knocked him down. All right, let's take a look at those stats. And I, I had. Talk about a surge down the, the stretch there. I had to cross things out about three or four different times as you kept adding your points totals here. 28 points, three rebounds, three assists, two steals, six of nine from the field, and we, as we mentioned, five of eight from the three-point arc and a perfect four for four at the free throw line. Joey Tosinski, congratulations, our Coca-Cola player of the game. Thank you very much. All right, let's bring it back to Gary and John. All right, Dan, thank you very much, and I'm sure John will be happy to share these highlights with you. Gary, it was a whale of an afternoon. Early on, there's uh, Seth Schaefer, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Corey Schaefer, knocking down a three all day long. This young man, Mackie McKnight, made his presence felt, especially down the stretch. We knew he was gonna be a handful. Here's Mackie pulling up from deep. He had a couple of threes late. Not necessarily what he's known for, but he did a great job. Today, there's the freshman Whitfield. Nice finish right here. The foul by Musters, the finish by Whitfield, doing a nice job. And then Joey Tuzinski, a little left-handed floater. He scored in just about every single kind of way there was. Watch Austin Price on the breakaway. The jam catches his hand on the rim and takes a monster spill. He was over getting his chin treated for a severe cut. Hopefully, he'll be okay. But boy, at the end of the day, it was this young man all day long. Joey Tuzinski, Seth Ru or I'm sorry, Zach Rupert got into the action as well. Lafayette, known for their three-point shooting. Boy, they really did a great job. That's Bryce Scott from downtown on the dribble drive and the kick. I don't know that they had a three, Gary, where they used a dribble to get it. And that speaks to the execution of this offense. Here's a little pick and roll, and then Bryce Scott finishing. Uh, out with a right hand, he's a left-handed player, love the way he finishes. Another catch and shoot by Joey Tuzinski. When this team is clicking offensively, Gary, they are very difficult to defend. Their range is unlimited. That was a late dagger. Mackie McKnight would not go away, but all game long, we saw Lafayette's interior defense do a terrific job against 
the uh, the dribble drive by Mackie McKnight, and what better way to sum up the day? That was a one thousand dollar shot by a Lafayette student at a halftime promotion. And for the Leopards, it's just the way the day went. Well, you know, they shot 67% <laughs> from beyond the arc today. One for one from midcourt for $1,000. <laughs> Here's how the numbers shook out. Tim Kempton with a double-double today, 20 points and 13 rebounds. Mackie McKnight with 15 points. As Lehigh, 71 points on 26 field goals. They were 9 for 17 from beyond the arc and 10 for 13 from the foul line. As they go to 14 and 15, 7 and 9 overall now in the Patriot League. For Lafayette, again, they usually have three or four or five guys in double figures. Today it was four. Seth Hendricks didn't get them, only four points, but he had 13 rebounds, a career high. Joey Tosinski matches a career high in points with 23 of them. Nick Linder with 11, Bryce Scott with 16, and Dan Trist with 10. The 77 Lafayette points on 26 field goals, 10 for 15 from beyond the arc. And 15 for 21 from the foul line. But down the stretch, they did not miss a foul shot. Lafayette 77 points gives them a 10 and 17 overall record. 6 and 10 in the Patriot League. 5 of 6, or 6 out of 7, their last ball games. They will travel to Colgate on Wednesday. They'll travel to Army next Saturday. And then we'll see how those standings shake out to see if they come back here to Kirby for a quarterfinal Patriot League contest. This one has been fun. I hope you have enjoyed it. For John Leone, Dan Mowdy, Rick Kiho, the RCN television team, thanks so much for spending a Sunday afternoon with us. For all of us, I'm Gary Laubach. Goodbye, everybody.